boy, you grew up in in a really small place, didn't you? It, it was pretty small. The closest town was Princess Anne, and and I always equated Princess Anne to Mayberry. We had a single stoplight and town cop and uh, and sort of all those accoutrements of Mayberry. So. Given that those surroundings, I guess I'm not surprised by the subjects that you later return to with your art, but it was all around you, right? It was. I uh, I wish I had had, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that we've got such wonderful cameras now and, and I don't have those great subjects to go out and find and get pictures of now. I didn't realize all that stuff was going to disappear as quickly as it did. If you went to places in sort of the backwaters of Crisfield and Deal Island, and those were communities very close to me, we had watermen in Mount Vernon, but we never had very many. Uh, most of the boat yards and the crab shanties and the, 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 the every, even some, we did have some oyster houses down in Mount Vernon at one time where the, where the folks actually brought the oysters right in on the dock. They were wheelbarrowed right in and, and shucked and put in a can and they were gone by the afternoon. But uh, those places, like uh, Deal Island and Crisfield, actually had some old boat graveyards where if the boat just got too, too bad to keep up any longer, they were run up in that creek and abandoned in the marsh. And they were pretty picturesque. I mean, some of the boats, until they actually, uh, a, a work boat like that has a tendency to snap open like a clothespin once it loses the transom. Uh -huh. so, as long as the integrity of that hull stays there, they, they were still attractive boats. They maintained their flair and their sheer, and they had some good old features like the, the, the monkey rail from stem to stern that, that, that gradually uh, just sort of fell out of favor. And uh, those textures of that, uh, that driftwood hull and that old lead paint peeling off in, in pieces that for all the world look like a potato chip. Because even from an early age, I felt that paintings had a certain magic to them. They would invite the viewer in and your imagination fills in things. I think that's why the impressionistic type works are, are, are just, uh, they, they sort of attach themselves to so many viewers because you can fill in details the way you can't quite do with a photograph. So as, as time would go by, I would love that brushwork where more is less. So, but I've still got that attachment for detail. Um, and, I, and I love that in marine paintings and uh, wildlife paintings and even aviation art paintings. I love that detail, but I, I like that break where, the, where your imagination fills in and you see that brushwork. Yeah, so. I mean, I can go to a certain, uh, site on one day and find nothing inspiring for some reason. Maybe it's just too plain. On another occasion, it, it, it might even be rainy and there's just something about the way those clouds are scudding across the sky. And I think, uh, uh, I think that's really cool. That's neat. And I want to share that because I've, I, I do find that other folks go, oh yeah, I think that's neat too. So that's, I take that to be my job of sorts. I find these things that I find pretty interesting or neat. And I try to capture that in the painting. And then I get to share that with folks and hopefully they find it neat too.